So we've been talking about seeds. Dr. Keck spoke about seeds just last week in our 1030 service, and we're still continuing with that conversation together with you. This week, we have another parable, another way of thinking about what the kingdom of God is. And in Matthew, this kingdom of God is, is just opposed to the kingdom of Rome and to, to the way that that kingdom uses power and authority, the way, that, the, way the kingdom of Rome uh, takes advantage of people, the way the kingdom of Rome uh, doesn't care about the humanity of those people it takes over, the way the kingdom of Rome continues to literally use people to enrich itself, no matter what the cost. The kingdom of God, though, is an alternative kingdom. And that kingdom is rooted in love, in compassion, in justice, which, which means that, that, that we do that which God wants for the world. Um, it, it's rooted in, in the restoration of all things. It's rooted in the dignity of all humanity. It is rooted in the beauty of creation. It is rooted in this cycle of reconciliation, and, and it is rooted in shalom, in peace, integration, wholeness, and healing. That's the kingdom of God. And so these conversations then are trying to give us an image for us to think about these two kingdoms. And what do we do in light of those two kingdoms? And though this is a conversation that was very much uh, kind of important for those folk 2,000 years ago, it is still important for us today. Now, now we have to remember something here. This, this passage today, uh, if you look at this whole kind of part of Scripture can get quite gritty and difficult and complex. But let us remember something here. This is almost like an aside to the sermon, if I may, today. We have to kind of change our minds about how we view Scripture together. See, Scripture is, 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 a, is a text that's rooted in the communities that first birthed it. Just like if we were writing some reflections on kingdom today, those those reflections would be deeply rooted in our own understandings. For example, uh, our understanding of kingdom is kind of far removed from these ancient understandings. So we would talk more about things like our executive branch of government, and we would talk about democracy, and we would talk about the republic and how that republic uses power. Oh, there's critiques there too, right? But we would reflect on our understandings of of empire and power and, and, and government based upon our experience of said things. So these ancient writers were thinking about their understandings in a similar way. So in this text, they're juxtaposing Rome with the kingdom of God, but still using the, the vocabulary of the kingdom. And actually in Matthew today, they also in some ways mimic the methods of the kingdom because it's just what they knew. Now, this way of thinking about the text does not take away from the text as a way for us to connect with the larger story of God or faith. So there's some theological kind of things that we can learn together here, but we have to be realistic that we can't just then take that, that story as it is literally and bring it to today. That would be anachronistic, right? Take it to today and use it without any, any type of, of, of thinking and questioning and interrogation of said text. So this is why the text sounds so strong to us. It should, and we shouldn't just then automatically just use the language uh, that, that the text uses. So, so let us play with this text together. Now, now that we, we have a, a, another way of thinking about it, through the lens of, of thinking about scripture. So the story is pretty simple. A sower comes and sows a field of wheat. And then at night, the evil one, an enemy really, comes and sows seed for, for weed in an effort to sabotage the work of the kingdom. <laughs> sabotage the planting. Now, the, the workers who know, who know planting see this pretty quickly, very quickly as the shoots of wheat 
begin to come up. They see the weeds growing alongside it. And the initial response from them is to say, let's pluck out the weeds and let then the wheat grow alone. Now, the, the owner of the field says something different to them. He says, no, no, let the, the wheat and the weed come up together. Once they have grown, we'll be able to easily identify the two, and then we can get rid, rid of, the, of the weeds and keep the wheat. If we don't do that, if we don't let them grow side by side, then we might confuse one from the other because they're so similar at this stage of their development. And then we might actually end up losing money, losing the crop that we have spent so much time and efforts planting. And so, so the kingdom of God is like the wheat. And the kingdom of Rome is like the weed. In those early moments of this community's life and story, it would have been easy to try to differentiate between those two things early on. But they had to wait to see the fruit of set planting. By the way, Jesus in Matthew told us that a few chapters ago. He says, you know, you will know them by their fruit. So, so, so Jesus is inviting all of us to take a moment, to, to just stop just for a moment and consider what's happening here. What do we see here? So in 2023, what does this look like for us? What is the wheat? What is the kingdom of God for us today? What does it look like to live a reality that is just, loving, compassionate, forgiving, restorative, generative, and whole? What does that reality look like for us? Where do we see that reality at work in our lives. And then where do we see the other reality? Where you have power over, where you have abuse, where you have marginalization, where you have hatred, where you have despair, where you have a lack of forgiveness, where you have a sense of haughtiness or pride, where you have a sense in which, in which the person thinks that they're the center of the universe or the system is built in such a way that it becomes the center of the universe, which can happen even to the church sometimes. Where are we seeing that? And, and, and the only way that we can then discern one from the other is with time, to allow it to grow alongside one another together. And as it grows, we're gonna see the signs of the kingdom together. Which kingdom is it? And then we get to choose which one do we choose, right? We get to choose which one do we harvest and which one do we throw away. That was a reality 2,000 years ago, and it's the reality today. And the, re the, the truth is that in our own day-to-day -day lives, we have, we have this opportunity every day in every movement we make, in the choices that we make in each day, in our, in our personal lives, in our, in our work day, in the way we, we kind of shape the next generation around us, we, we have uh, some discernment to make, and we must pay close attention and ask the question, what fruit do we see here in this, in this very moment, in this system, in this opportunity, in this decision that we're trying to make? And so then we together discern together. Now, now, it is, it is easy for each of us to, 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 to get uh, uh, sidetracked. It is easy for us not to, not to recognize sometimes between the two because, again, they're pretty close together. And this is why the sermon requires some things. So I just want to share a few things about the sermon that might kind of help you awaken to, to seeing which empire is at work before you. And one of the things is that when you're trying to discern, you do not discern alone, that, that we need a community of people around us uh, to help us in discernment. I had a, a mentor long ago tell me that something like this, that, that human beings are experts at self-deception, that we can convince ourselves 
of a lot of things. This is that thing in psychology called confirmation bias, right? So because we, we have this confirmation bias, because we can deceive ourselves so easily, then we need others around us who can give us different perspectives. This is why the community called the church is so pivotal, because we, we together have a, a natural community that we gather with, uh, and, and that community is diverse with people that have a different set of opinion, different ways of looking at the world, and then, then that, that way, that community can give us different angles through which we can look at a circumstance or a situation in our lives and in the systems around us. So the first thing is when we're trying to discern, let, let's make sure we, we you're careful about confirmation bias, right? So let's bring a community into conversation together. I think the other, the other thing is that we need to have patience because sometimes what we see at the beginning is not really what is there. In other words, that, that sometimes a, a person like me, for example, that I tend to jump at trying to fix something or, or jump at clarifying something or, or jump at making something better, might just need to wait a few moments or, a, or longer than that and have the patience to see what's really happening here, observe it, interrogate it, look at it, compare it. And only in that movement can we really recognize what's really happening there? And can we make a decision whether that set movement, set decision, uh, set initiative mimics the kingdom of God or not? So we need to practice that kind of patience uh, together. Um, Eugene Peterson wrote a book years ago called A Long Obedience in the Same Direction. So there's that sense of that, that long that long, careful listening for, but continue to move towards love, continue to move towards restoration, continue to move towards shalom, right? It's not that we're, we don't do anything, it's that we wait actively as we seek to make decisions that, that mimic the kingdom of God. And then the, 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 last, the last thing that I want us to kind of think about together today is that how, as, 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 as we get ready to take the harvest, um, the, the text has some really kind of difficult things to say. You know, what do you do with the harvest? You kind of throw it away, right? You burn it. <laughs> so he, he, here's my, my thought on that. Jesus called us to love enemies. And, and that is an invitation that we should take seriously here too. And there are systems that need to be removed from our life together, that are systems of oppression, that are systems that do not reflect the love of God in the world. That is for sure. But those systems are not people. The people, though, we need to continue to be in connection and in conversation. The people, though, we need to continue to dignity, dignity affirm them. We don't necessarily have to be constantly in friendship. <laughs> or, or in, in, in intimate relationship with them, uh, that doesn't have to be restored necessarily. But we have to be careful that in our efforts at living into this kingdom of God, that we, we do not malign other humans around us who might think differently than we do, might believe differently than we do, might not have the same goals that we do. Here's where this text today troubles me, right? Because it seems to say, throw that away get rid of it, destroy it. No, no, the kingdom of God is never destructive. The kingdom of God is always generative and life-giving. Uh, the, the kingdom of God never, never provides the kind of punishment that you see in this text today. The kingdom of God always provides a way forward with grace and love and reconciliation and possibility. And, and, and so, again, those folk 2,000 years ago were reflective of, upon what they knew about the kingdom. Maybe we need to rethink the way kingdoms should work for our current situation today. And may that be more reflective of a God of love, a God whose essence is restoration and justice and, and peace. Then that gives us a sense of what we do with the weeds that we encounter in our own lives, in the lives of those we love, and the weeds that we encounter in the systems all around us. May we treat that with the same love and compassion 
that the gospel calls us to. So, today, where are the, the weeds that you're seeing popping up in your life? What discernment do you need today? In your heart and soul, what seeds are growing there? in your community, in your family and community, what seeds are growing there? What are you seeing? What shoots are popping up in the systems that you're a part of in workplaces and, and in, in government life, right? In, 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 and in the churches that you're a part of. What, what, what's, what do you see springing up? Let us discern together for the kingdom of God is needed in the world through you and through the communities around us. Thanks be to God. Amen.